If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me. This morning we're going to finish our series. We've been preaching on Thanksgiving, and today I'm going to finish this on giving Him thanks. And one of the things that we don't do and we should do is that it's not just at Thanksgiving that we should be thankful. We should be thankful every day. Aren't you glad that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever? That He does not change. And one of the things that we must realize is, is that giving God thanks is to give Him praise and appreciate who He is, saying, God, you are worthy. And we talked last week about what our worship is, is really giving worth to God, saying, God, you are good to me, and God, you, have, you are faithful to me, and God, you have blessed me. And I want you to realize right now, there are two things that I hope that you'll take out of this service. The first thing is, is that you are loved by God. Amen. You are loved by God. And I'm not talking, is, your, is everything going perfect or everything just right? Are you, are you not having any problems? What I want to tell you is, is that no matter what you find yourself in or the place to where you find yourself, you are loved by God. Amen. Amen? Amen. And when you can grasp that idea, you can realize that. And the second thing that I want you to realize is, is God promises to bless you with everything that He has. God will never leave you nor forsake you. He will be with you always. As His promise continues to tell us that He is God. This particular section of Scripture is found of, uh, of some men who were, well, if you will, they were not sure if they're all Jews. We're not, we're not sure. We know that at least one of them was a Samaritan. We realize that they were, they were men that were, as the, the Scripture will read out to us, is that they were men that had a need. And sometimes when we realize the most productive time of being thankful is when we realize that in our time of need, God is still God. Yep. That He does not change. And when we think about that, we realize the work of God and the hand of God. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 11 through 17. I'm not going to be long-winded, but I have a... a cough drop that if this is called the eternal cough drop no I'm just kidding just kidding it, this is a and, and I put somebody said well pastor why do you put a cough drop and I know how long to preach because I preach long enough that my cough drop when it dissolves I know I should be done the only problem is is that sometimes I put buttons in my mouth and the sermons go on and on and on but I'll try today you saw that I it was a cough drop today in the Gospel of Luke, the 17th chapter, starting in verse 11, it says, And now it happened as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Verse 14 says, And so when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was... Uh, that as they went, they were cleansed. Would you bow your heads with me and let's ask God's blessings on the remainder of this service as we open our minds and our hearts to Him today. Would you just bow your heads with me for the next few minutes. Heavenly Father, thank You. Thank You for, God, the, the promise of Your appearance in this place today. Thank You, Heavenly Father, for Your anointing that I feel. I ask you right now, Heavenly Father, that you would reach into the hearts and minds of each one that's here, and God, that they would receive, that truly you would speak to us, not just through these lips of clay, but Heavenly Father, your anointing would penetrate the very, the very work of the heart, and I pray that, Heavenly Father, your work and your word would go forth in a mighty way. And now, Heavenly Father, right now, I depend upon you to do what needs to be done, speak what needs to be spoken, and God, let the hearts and minds be open that they would receive it in Jesus' name. We pray, amen and amen. amen. My sermon today is about the act of giving thanks. This particular section of Scripture, God uh, is, is worthy of giving thanks at all times and for all things. When we think about giving thanks to God, it is a living life of sacrifice and gratitude. It is for what God has blessed us with and not because we deserve it, but because He promised to bless us. One of the things that you need to realize is, is that no matter what the circumstances, in, the Bible says in everything give thanks. Come on, amen? amen? How many of you can stop right now and know that God has blessed you 
and done something for you. If you can do that right now, just, just, just bow your heads, raise your hands up towards heaven and say, thank you, God, for your blessings. Raise your hands. Let's see if you can get it. I just want you to come on. Just think about it for just the next couple seconds here. God, you are so good. You are so good to us. God, you are so faithful to us. You have blessed us. You have healed us. You have sustained us. You have supplied for us. You have provided for us. God, when there were no jobs, you made a way to find a job. Heavenly Father, you, you God, who, who made a way, Heavenly Father, to, to, to because I didn't have it, God, you supplied it and you provided for it. And God, I give you the thanks today. I thank you for the times when I was weak and you healed my body. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the times when, Lord, in, in me I could do nothing, but in you all things are possible. God, I thank you for teaching me to depend solely and completely upon you, the God that I serve. And I worship you and I praise you and I give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Well, Lord, I worship you and I magnify you. Amen. Amen. If you raised your hand, you were willing to say that you thank God, then you could join with these men who had, had been to the, the very idea of what they had been. They had seen it. How many of us today would say that we have received a blessing from God? Have you been giving God thanks for it? Have you done this every day since God did it? Amen. Come on, sometimes we get into a place to where our life becomes so busy that we forget to thank God for what He has done. We forget to thank God for who He is and how He has done it. We forget to thank God for his, the power and the anointing that He provides for us. We should live because we know that He provides for us, and if He's done it before, He can do it again. And sometimes because we're in the midst of a difficulty or a battle or a circumstance that we don't understand, we stop giving God thanks, waiting until things can change. But what we need to do is live a life continuously to give God thanks. Amen. Amen. Is it still doing it? They gave me a new mic with new batteries. We are in trouble now. You'll take just a few minutes. The first thing that I want you to realize is the recipients of, of God's blessings. The recipients of these blessings that God had given to these men were, was very simple. And the task that God had given to them was very simple. Each of them had a need uh, that, that could not fix. It was beyond their ability to fix it. I want you to realize this. How many of you today, if you were to say this, now I want you to be honest with me, would say that you have a need in your life right now? You have a circumstance in your life that you need a miracle. You need God to do something. Maybe you need, maybe you need healing. Maybe you need a job. Maybe you, maybe you need a, you know, God's direction in your relationships, in your marriage. Maybe, come on, how many of you just lift them up high one more time? Come on, lift them up. If you have a need, know this. If, you have a, if you're sick in your body, you have a need. Come on, amen? These men had a need, and they realized it, and they recognized it, and they saw the source. And what they did was they cried out to the answer. They cried out with hope and they cried out for help. And so many times you've got to realize this. If we have a need in our life right now, you've got to go to the right source. Come on, amen. We've got to quit trying to turn on the TV to fix our answers. We've got to quit running to the doctor every time we get a runny nose. We've got to quit doing that. We've got to start running to God first. The dreadful disease. This dreadful disease of leprosy these men had was literally where your skin would begin to deteriorate. It would generally turn white, and then after a while, it would fall off. Just hold your fingers up right here. Can you imagine having a disease that your fingers would turn white, and then eventually that leprosy would eat those fingers until they would fall off? Their ears, their nose, parts of their body would begin to deteriorate and, and it would become so, uh, so much so that the leprosy would, would consume the individual until it would become the, the very uh, detriment to their life and they would die. This was the need that these, it seemed like a hopeless situation because not only were they hopeless in the fact that they had this dreadful disease that would soon take their life, that they were literally falling apart. But they had to realize that they had to be isolated because once somebody was diagnosed with it, 
God told them in the wilderness when, the, when, when they saw leprosy that they said, you are to separate yourself from all contact from anyone other than those who had leprosy. So this bond of, of 10 lepers there was not unusual, but they weren't allowed to be close to them. So that's why when they saw Jesus, they had to cry out from a distance. Jesus is never far from you. The Bible says that he's ever present in our time of need. And right now, it, it may seem like Jesus is a long way off, but you've got to realize you don't have to holler too loud to know that he's right there with you. The Bible says, call upon the Lord while he is near, and he's near to you when you have a need. When they looked at this, they began to realize that they couldn't fix their problem. There was no cure. There was no remedy. There was no ability. They knew that they couldn't themselves, and they had to depend upon somebody bigger than themselves. Let me ask you this question. In your situation, in your problem that you raised your hand for, do you realize this, that you can't do it yourself, that you need God to do it for you? If you raised your hand, then what you do right now is you need to realize raising your hand one more time to say, thank you, God, because I know that you can fix this. I know that you can redeem this. I know that you can supply this. I know that you're able, God, and I put my hope completely in you. The ignite heal them. You see, sometimes we'll go through the process and we'll weed out and we'll do the things that we want to do, but we don't realize the necessity that we have to have is for the dependency upon God's healing touch, for God to supply and God to provide. They acknowledged the ability of Jesus. They recognized and they realized who he was. Jesus. Have mercy on us. They recognized the touch that they needed. They recognized the source of who he was. They recognized the power that he has. Sometimes when we reach out to Jesus and we call to him, we call to him and we limit him by our lack of faith or our inability to believe. I can tell you this, that no matter what you raised your hand for today, my God is able to take care of the circumstances that you raised your hands for today. You don't have to worry about it. God is not short. God is not limited. God God is not, does not have an ability. You don't have to prescribe. You don't have to do all the things to jump through all the hoops of religion. What you have to do is have faith in Jesus Christ. These men had, had maybe they didn't have a lot of knowledge in the religious background, but what they did, they had the right angle to call upon the one who could make the difference. And they had faith to believe that Jesus could do a miracle for them. I ask you this question. If you raised your hand, you have a need in your life right now. Do you believe that Jesus can do a miracle for you? Do you believe that? Oh, I thank you, Jesus. I know you can. I know you can. I cry to you and say, oh, Jesus, have mercy on me. You know my need today, oh, God. You know the source that I have, and you know the pain that the enemy brings. And God, right now, you are my source of strength. You are my healer. You are my supplier. They knew Jesus and the ability they had. They didn't think they deserved it, but they ask anyways. Jesus, have mercy on us. Listen, the Bible says go boldly before the throne of God to pronounce your need. But that doesn't mean you go arrogantly. You go in humility. But you go with the confidence to know that he can and that he is no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter how long you have been in the church. It doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe you, you, you're, you're, you're new to the faith. Maybe you, maybe you just started this walk. Maybe you, you've never had to pray this prayer, but I can tell you this right now. There is a God who loves you that can do all things. The Bible said if we have faith to believe, all things are possible to them that believe. And right now, right now, right now, God can do the miracle that you need. Come on, Amen. Not because you're the right religion, not because you're the, the right race, not because you speak the right language, not because you know the prayers and you can repeat them over and over again. It's because you have faith in the source and a man by the name of Jesus Christ. That's your miracle and that's the one who's gonna supply it for you today. We do the live streaming and I thank God the Ben's back this week. Missed him last week, but I hope that you're at home and if you're, you're there watching this, I know that there are some that are 
that are seeing this and they need to know this. Listen, you don't even have to join this church. You don't have to pay your tithe. You don't have to jump through all the hoops that, that religion will say. You know what you have to do? Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Lord, not because I deserve it, but because you are who you are. I reach my hand up and I pray. Come on, reach your hand up one more time. Come on, I feel God in this place. God is, God is going to answer by faith to someone who is reaching up to say, God, I believe you can. Mm, I believe you can, God. Across this place, God, you are speaking volumes to the very works uh, of our, our needs right now. Heavenly Father, it is not based upon the abilities that we have, but it's based upon you. The Bible says that after they went, notice that they, that they did not receive it, the miracle that, that some of you are saying, God, right now, and, you, and you, I used to do this, and, and, and a lot of times when I pray for, for the, 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 the instantaneous well-being of the moment that I pray, and I say, God, you're going to do it, you've got to do it right now. But how many of you know God doesn't limit himself to our timetable? I laid there one day and I was so sick and I prayed the night before the flu and, and, and it was a severe case of the flu and I laid there and I was so sick. I got up and I was determined. I said, God, I've prayed to you. I believe you for my healing. I believe you can heal me. And I said, God, I'm going to trust you for my healing. And I went ahead and got up and started getting ready. And I was in the shower and I got sick again and I, and I, I, I just began to shake and shiver. And, and I told my wife, I said, I got to go to church. I got, I'm believing my healing. And she said, you're going to bed. Never will forget. I thought I was going to die right there on that, that episode. Have anybody ever that bad a case of flu before? Oh, I have. And I was laying there. I remember I was, I was laying in bed and I said, oh, God, if you choose to take me right now, God, I hope I've lived righteously and I, I've, I've served you faithfully. And my son, Brandon, was just outside the room and I told Brandon, I said, Brandon, come here. If I don't make it, son, take care of your mom. You're the man of the house. And he looked at me and he said, Dad, suck it up. You only got the flu. <laughs> but I stayed home that day. I did what I knew to do, and I didn't want to get anybody else sick, so I stayed home, and I prayed, and I continued to pray. The next day, I woke up, and you know what? I felt better. It didn't happen when I planned on it to happen, because I had it planned. God, you gave me a sermon, and I'm going to preach it, and you know what? God blessed the church. We had a, an individual that had just started coming to the church, and God used him to speak a word to the people and pray for the, the congregation, and I said, thank you, God, because he shined at a time that he needed to shine. Sometimes we try to put God in a box and say, God, you did. how many years do you know? How many? We don't know how long these men had been with this leprosy. We don't know the time or the extent of it. We don't know how bad they had it, but we do know that they all had been diagnosed with leprosy. But at the point in the moment and the time, Jesus saw fit to stop. The Bible tells us, go ahead and pull that next scripture up, that one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice and glorified God and fell down at his feet and giving him thanks. He was Samaritan. He, in other words, there's so much to this portion of Scripture in this particular part. I want you to look at this, how that he gave thanks to Jesus, how that he came back to give thanks to Jesus. Now remember there were 10 who received their miracle as they went. Sometimes you just got to have faith to go. When Jesus said, go to the, go to the temple and show yourself to the priest, what, what would happen is, is if they had showed themselves to the priest and they weren't healed, they would have been exiled again. They would have been told for a longer period of time to leave. So they took a step of faith to be able to say, Lord, I believe you can heal me. And they took a step of faith to go forward into the priest and they took a step of faith to go to that place but when they went there they begin to turn they begin to walk away and they begin to realize that this leprosy is gone the leprosy is gone with every come on some of you need to walk this walk of faith with me 
that when you're, as you're walking, you begin to receive it. Amen. You may not see it in this moment. You may not see it at this very second right now. You may be still struggling. You may still be hurting. You may still have the pain and the sickness. You may still have the problems, but I can tell you, as you walk that walk, as you take that step, and as you begin to turn in faith because you said, Jesus, I believe you can, you got to walk that walk and step that step, and as you go, you'll see your healing. But here's the problem. Ten of them were healed that day. Only one came back to worship Jesus. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you something. Here's what happens. Somebody can look down and say, oh, my goodness. Those other nine should be ashamed of themselves. Those other nine are terrible. But with this congregation across this place where God has provided and God has done us miracle after miracle after miracle. How many times have we delayed coming back to say, thank you, God. We get caught up in our present battle that we forget what God has already done. We forget what God has given us to be, to be victorious. Oftentimes we'll pray, oh God, give me a job, give me a job. God, I need a job. God gives us a job. You say, God, if you'll give me a job, I'll be faithful to it. And you show up one Sunday after it, but you forget him the rest of the time. Is this on? Because I don't know if I got it through. Or, or how about when God raises us up off our sick bed? And he heals us and you lay in that and you say, God, if you'll heal me, I'll be faithful to you. And then how quickly we forget that promise that we made. Pastor, you're on my toes, I know. First, how did he return to Jesus? The one thing that he did was by faith he returned to Jesus. He came back to him. He came back to the one who the source that he had received his miracle from. When you realize that God is the one who does your miracles, you've got to understand you need to return to him. Amen. Don't just show up and give thanks to somebody else or anybody else. It needs to be him. Amen. If something that we must do is realize that God is faithful and God is good and God will always be there. But you need every morning to thank God for the new day. Amen. Thank God for the miracle that he's done in your past. If you don't have anything to thank him for, then you're not living with the Savior that I know. I was... That's when I was putting together the dedication service. I remembered... I don't, I don't remember the day because I was pretty young. I was about three years old. My sister was younger than I was by a couple years, and my mom had those little shoes on my sister that had the bells on them. And, and, and I, I was curious of those little bells on my sister's shoes. So I remember this, uh, that my mom tells me this story, and, and she is very dramatic when she tells the story. She was telling me the story, and she said, I was in the bathroom getting ready and we were finished and we were we were you know I was trying to get the kids ready and I left the the two kids in the floor and I was finishing up getting ready and all of a sudden uh, I, I didn't hear any noise and I didn't hear anything so I went running in the room and I had taken the bell off my sister's shoes and I had put it in my mouth and swallowed it and that bell got stuck in that's I'm not a dingling because of that that's other reasons but I swallowed that bell and I couldn't breathe and I, my mom came in the room and when she did, she saw me. I was changing colors and I was gasping for breath and I couldn't breathe and my mom, she panicked and she grabbed me by the, and she began to try to shake me to pull it out. She, goes, she couldn't believe what was going on and she began to hold me up by one foot and the only thing she knew was to run to the door and she had me by one foot hollered out the door, help me, somebody help me. My dad who worked a, a job in the grocery store business and he was a manager of a grocery store very seldom had a chance to leave but he happened to be on a bank run where he made the bank deposit and he was on his way back and he said I think I'll swing by the house my mom said he probably did that twice since we'd lived in this house she said when she started hollering out my dad pulled in the driveway and saw my mom hanging me out by the door my dad said oh goodness what has he done now my dad went running up to the house and I had already changed colors and I hadn't breathed for a while and, and, and the color of my, my complexion, dad said, I could tell that this had been a little while. So my dad tried to, to, to do something that to get to relieve the 
reached his finger down, which, if, by the way, if, you're, if you have people choking, don't push your finger down their throat. You'll make it worse. But I, my dad reached his finger down my throat, and, he's, and his hand was a lot bigger than my mouth. And he popped that bell out, and I began to scream. And I haven't stopped screaming since then. But every time my mom tells that story, and I've heard it said so many different ways, but I can tell you this, the thing that I'm reminded of is that God was faithful way back then. Amen. And if he can take care of me then, he can, can take care of me today. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. If I can, if I, 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 some of you need to go back in your mind to when God touched you before and you need to remember those times when God provided for you before you need to remember what God has done because what we oftentimes do is we forget we get so preoccupied with going forward with our life that we forget the source of our life and that is Jesus Christ and we need to go back in our in our life and begin to just take time it, it should be a regular thing Lord thank you thank you for the air that I breathe thank you for the life that I have Thank you, God, for the things that I have in my life. Thank you, God. Listen, the Bible even says be thankful in all things. Be thankful for all things. Now, I'm going to preach a little bit on that tonight maybe. But I can tell you this. Sometimes we want to be thankful for the good, but you've got to be thankful even for the bad because God has a purpose even in our trial to be the testimony of our faithfulness. Amen. Come on, Amen. And if you're going through something right now, if you're going through a struggle, you're going through a problem, you need to return to Jesus Christ and you need to get back to the one, the source of your help and call upon him and say, thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that he glorified God loudly. We pre preached a little bit on this last week, but we got to make a enter his gates with thanksgiving and our enter into his courts with praise. Raise our voices loudly and say, God is good. Amen. <laughs> God didn't say, you know, I don't, I don't know about you, but how many of you, I know, please don't take offense to this, but how many of you watched the Sun Devils win last night? Oh, thank you for your honesty. The rest of you, shame on you for fibbing. Arizona, the, 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 the Sun Devils won. They won the football game. They beat Oregon, and we we beat the, 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 the number one team and, and I, I was yelling and I was hollering my son walked by my room and he goes what's wrong with you I said be quiet leave me alone I'm cheering for my team they're my team as long as they're winning <laughs> but, but I was cheering and I said Whoa! I just woke up everybody who was dozing right there but you know why God says make a loud noise and he worshiped God loudly because he wanted everybody to know this Jesus has healed my soul. This Jesus has made me whole. This Jesus is, you need to tell somebody and make it loud. God has healed me. God has saved me. God has forgave me. Come on, make a loud noise to Jesus today. Amen. Don't be ashamed and don't be shy. Don't be a closet Christian. Come on, be loud and proud of what God is and who he is in you. Be radical for Jesus Christ. Well, I'm more dignified than that. Well, shame on you. I'm glad, wasn't, glad God wasn't too dignified to find me in my lost state, in my place of need. He said, I don't have to worry about that. I love you. And I care for you. It doesn't matter what the world says about you. God loves me. It doesn't matter all the failures and the faults. It doesn't matter about all the mistakes. What I want to do is be, I'm thankful because I realize what God saved me from and what God has planned for me. And when I begin to realize that, I can give God a praise loudly. Somebody said, well, I'm, I'm a little more dignified than that, Pastor. Chuck, you got your hammer? Just bring how oh, Because if somebody said, well, I'm too dignified to make a loud noise, I'm going to say, bring your hand up here, put your thumb on that table right there, and let me hit it with that hammer, and I'll see how loud you can be. 
Come on, you can be reserved about a lot of things, but if God has done something for you, you need to be loud about it, amen. You need to let the world know Jesus Christ has made a difference in my life. He's my source, he's my help, he's my strength. Somebody said, well, pastor, you're supposed to be quiet in church. No, you're not. No, that's when we need to roar all that much louder, amen. We need to be loud about it, amen. When, and, and somebody said, well, pastor, you're loud all the time. Yes, I am, amen. amen. Thank you, Jamie, for your confirmation on that. <laughs> Number three, he fell down on his face at his feet. He took a pose of worship not of power. Now, a lot of times we talk about raising your hands. We talk about this. What this man did is he got down on his knees. I hope I can get back up, Jamie. If I can't, you'll help me, right? He got down on his face and he fell down and he worshiped the Lord. Thank you, Jamie. I think I made it, but that's good. When he fell down, he was simply saying, thank you, God. I don't even deserve it. I don't even re... I, I, I humbly come before you and you did what only you can do. And sometimes we got to realize this. When we come to God, we must humble ourselves and kneel down and lay in a state of worship. Amen. Amen. Now, when I pray on Tuesday nights, we have Tuesday night prayer. Thank you for coming. It's kind of quiet right now. But anyways, we'll move right on from that. When I like, to, I like to walk and pray, and I walk and I pray and I walk and I pray and walk around this place, but there are times, and Brother Bledsoe, he's there about every, every Tuesday night with me. There are times that when the presence of God becomes so overwhelming for what he is doing and what he has done that I just want to kneel down. I want to put myself on the ground and say, God, I'm not worthy of it, but you are so good to me. I want to worship him with all that's within me. Not with the arrogance of me, but with the humbleness of my heart. Amen? Amen. When we kneel and we give God the praise, he fell, fell down at his feet and began to worship him. He was saying, you're the source I'm not. You're the strength I'm not. You're the one that I worship and I worship him. He gave thanks. One of the things that we must do is realize that we are to give him thanks. Have you taken time to thank Jesus? How many of you realize that we could, somebody told me the other day, they said, well, pastor, they, they came from another faith and they, were, they thought I was a father. And, and they came to me and they asked me, they said, father, I have a confession to make. And I said, well, okay. And they said, this is going to be quite lengthy. And they went all the way back to their childhood telling me everything that they had done wrong. And faith, after a little while of listening to that, I said, first of all, I want to tell you something. You don't have to tell God everything that you've done wrong. Believe it or not, he already knows everything you've done wrong. Yep. But I said, one of the things yep. that you can do is realize that his blood is faithful, that he can forgive you of all of your sins, that he is faithful and righteous to forgive you. And when, when I told him that, he looked at me and he said, do what? And I said, you can tell me all that you've done, but one of the greatest things that you can do right now is to realize that God has forgiven your sins and you need to lift your hands and your heart up and thank Him for what He's doing. The same God that forgave you in your past is the same God that's going to forgive you today. And you need to realize that He is forgiving you right now and that His grace is sufficient for you in everything and in every situation. Lift your hearts and your hands and realize that God has done it before. He'll do it again. God is faithful. God, right now, Heavenly Father, I give you thanks that you saved a wretch like me. That in my late, late years, God, of my late teen years, God, you saw fit to spare me one more time. God, that you never gave up on me even when I fell and began to do silly things. God, you, you still helped me. And Lord, I, I pray that you would forgive me of the times when I, when I ex expediently expected your grace and when you gave it to me, I never turned back. I give you thanks for all that you have done for me. I give you thanks. Amen. 
There's a little chorus that we sing. Those of you who can sing, help me out with it. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Stand up and let's sing it again one more time. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Would you just lift your hands up right now? Just lift your hands up one more time. You see, when this man came back to give Jesus thanks and he bowed down at his feet and he began to give him thanks and he said, I give him thanks and I give him praise and I give him thanks. He began to worship him and as he was worshiping him, the power of God began to move on the scene. And the Bible says that when Jesus asked where the other nine were and he began to pray and he said, this Samaritan, this one right here, he's not even a Jew, but he, he, he's, he's thanking me for what I've done. The very last verse of my text was this. When Jesus saw him, he said to him, Arise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Most Bible commentaries and Bible scholars believe that this man had the leprosy was gone and he had no more leprosy. And when he went to show himself to the priest, he was clean and clear. The leprosy was gone. But he had still probably had a part of his ear missing. Maybe a part of his fingers had fallen off. Maybe his nose had begun to decay. But the Bible says that when Jesus said, go your way and be made whole, that the man immediately, I believe that God can do this, grew back his fingers, grew back his ears, grew back his nose whatever was wrong he said I'll make you whole not just well but whole